Welcome to Three Devs and a Maybe, the podcast series for beginner web developers and general web enthusiasts. Now, introducing your show hosts Michael Budd, Fraser Hart, Lewis Keynes, and Ed Mann. Hello and welcome to another episode of Three Devs and a Maybe. Uh, my name's Ed Mann and today is a, well, actually a lot bigger podcast than it was last week. We just me and Fraser. Uh, we've got another two people. So Fraser, hello again. Hello. How are hello. you? Uh, and then we've also got Mixter. Mickey, you're on the line. I'm back. You're yeah. back. And it sounds good. Hey. You sound good being back, you know. Thanks. I was expecting dial up connections and yeah, so it sounds good at the moment. And yeah. we're very lucky today to have Justin DeLucia back on again. We used to work together, all of us, and it's a pretty long overdue catch up. So, how you doing, Justin? <laughs> <laughs> Boom! Justin's, yeah, Justin's been having problems with his connection, <laughs> but he literally just sent me uh, a private message saying that he was uh, he was actually going to go and watch a Barbara Streisand concert quickly. Apparently, his favourite songs on TV. So he'll be back very shortly as soon as she's finished singing that song. <laughs> it all it all unravels. Everyone loves Barbara Streisand. Yeah. She's a legend. It's good. Oh, yeah. so, well, while his internet connection's uh, getting back on, how are you doing, Fraser? How's your week been? It's been all right, thanks, mate. Um, I am trying to think of anything remarkable that I can tell you that's happened, but not a lot has happened, to be honest. Uh, how about really the, sh- um, has the thing gone live yet? The No, it's still not gone live yet. We're, we're doing some, I was working on it today. We're just doing some more optimization because it's, it's very graphically heavy, so we're, mm. we're kind of doing whatever we can to bring all the the weight of the sort of the of the thing down. So that involves basically chucking all the the image assets into texture packers, and then uh, yeah, just so we just Ooh, get big sprite that? sheets. Tec- so we oh, can- texture. So that actually then creates the sprite sheets that then you can just use to download instead of. That's Loads right. Yeah, it's, it's a really simple thing. So you just chuck a bunch of images onto into texture packer, and then it'll spit out a a. a What's the word I'm looking for? A sprite sheet with all your images on there, um, and you'll also get a JSON file as well, which kind of points to all the different um, the different elements within in the file. Oh, and then you, yeah, and you can load that fairly simply through Phaser and, uh, and and go from there. So I've been working on a bit of that today, um, also a bit on kind of scaling it a bit better for smartphones. I was saying last week that we we'd spent quite a bit of time on getting it to work nicely on on loads of different devices. Um, so what I'm doing is kind of just it, it was it was really really good, but it's kind of it was a little bit short. For, uh, Smartphones, so we had a bit more real estate to work with. I think, yeah, I think Justin's back on the line. Yeah, someone's back on the line. Um, but yeah, sorry, Brian, <laughs> yeah. carry on. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so that, that's all been all been going on. But it's a short week this week, so I was off out of the office yesterday. Um, had a day off, and oh then yeah, you were I, in Amsterdam, weren't you? Like this? No, weekend? no, no. I'm good. It's oh, this weekend. I'm going to weekend, Amsterdam. Uh, yeah, so I was off. Yeah, off yesterday because it was my birthday on Sunday, so they give you uh, the day off work. So Ooh. it fell on a Sunday, so I got the Monday off instead. And then, yeah, off to Amsterdam on Thursday. So I've got Thursday, Friday off, and then bank holiday on Monday. So I've got a five-day weekend as of tomorrow, well, about this time tomorrow. Oh, there you go, plain sailing. Absolutely, yeah. How about you, uh, anyway? Has, you, had a, you had a good week? Yeah, not bad, man. Not bad at all. Um, what have been doing this week? So mainly this week, actually, is uh, well, prepare, helping a, a colleague prepare for a presentation he's going to be doing at um, the Symphony UK meetup tomorrow night. Yeah, this sounds um, interesting. It, uh, it is pretty cool. It's, well, I can't really talk about it too much today, but hopefully next week I'll be able to talk about a bit more what we've been working on and stuff. And yeah, no, it's, it's pretty exciting. It's uh, All I can say, it's a tool for the PHP community. So it's, it's quite interesting, a composer tool for the PHP community. Um, but other than that, actually talking about uh, sprite sheets and stuff, there was an interesting article that I read this week about um, HTTP2. So you yes. know, the, finally the second spec of HTTP. Because uh, the one point one has been like, was standardised in like nineteen ninety nine, so we're <laughs> yeah. using something from nineteen ninety nine, and the web has changed over like fifteen years or so, or sixteen yep. years. So, but some of the things actually they were saying was it's actually sprite sheets will actually be worse off, like having bigger files. Oh, so they're going to let you have more HTTP requests at once? Hell yeah, you? you're going to be able to do oh, yeah. multiplex. So you'll just be able to do as much as you want, and it's actually quicker to do having yeah. smaller files, the specific files. That's than- the thing, yeah, because these sprite sheets that I'm creating, like the, the combined weight of everything, is always about ten percent bigger than the yeah. actual files because I guess if you're outputting in PNG or something like that it's having to include the color palette for each and every single image whereas if you can break it down into lots of different ones and you can obviously have a smaller color palette per image but 
obviously the the advantage that you get is the HTTP request so that's quite exciting yeah that is the thing isn't it and like the fact only you're only allowed a, a fixed amount per domain and that's why people then split off into subdomains yep. and stuff so they can actually be able to multi well not multiplex but in quote be able to do multiple ones and download yep. stuff at the same time but yeah no so that's one of the things HTTP2 uh, is going to be able to do so, so when can we expect that do we know well or it's is... interesting because it has finally been st- I think it's been standardized well the uh-huh. final spec of what they're going to do whether it's a, officially being you know released but there is a couple of um web servers that actually do partial or full support and one of them is actually quite interesting it's called h2o okay. and essentially all it is is it's a c it's written in c and it's a library but also a web server in itself and it seems to support the whole of http2 and actually is quicker than nginx so, all right you know obviously it's all great no these benchmarks and stuff so that'd be quite cool but one of the other things actually in http2 is these idea of it's a very strange thing i can't, don't know how to explain it exactly but what you'll be able to do is you know like we can do push notification well web sockets yeah you can push from the server to the actual client in yep. essence you'll be able to do that with assets so you can actually say it will download and then the asset uh, like essentially the, the the server will then say, "Oh, do you need this asset?" and it will push it to the server, uh, push it to the client as well. Yeah, so like a lazy it, load type, kind of style. Yeah, thing. kind of style. I think that. I, I mean, I could be completely wrong, but I, I'll put in yeah. the show notes the blog post I read. But it's really interesting, and it kind of just it really shows you that HTTP and the protocol has really kind of you know, I mean, it has changed everything. Everyone uses it now. Everything from your fridge yeah. to, you know, what we use on the mobile device uses now the HTTP protocol. Even desktop applications use the HTTP protocol because it's so, you know, ubiquitous. So, you know, yeah. actually having this HTTP 2 and being able to kind of take advantage of optimizations and stuff. One of the other things, actually, which is a simple thing they've finally been able to do is compress headers. So initially, um, so originally in HTTP 1 and 1.1, they didn't actually do any compression on the headers so stuff like cookies, there were jokes about that cookies could be, you know, a couple of megabytes each. Yeah. So you could actually have a cook, you know, a response header, which is two megabytes. And you're compressing everything in, in, in the actual, you know, code, well, in the actual response, uh, apart from the actual header. So now finally you'll be able to compress headers, which would be good. Um, that's a simple, trivial thing. But yeah, no. So other than that, uh, what else have I been doing? That's about it, actually. How about you, Mixter? How have you been since the last time we spoke? You know what? A lot better, a lot better. Um, I've got a lot less pressure on me now. Yeah, it sounds um, like that of... in your voice. You can. It doesn't feel like the weight of your world yeah. is on your shoulders. Oh, yeah, it's just... nice to have you on the show where you're not crying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah we, always have, we always have to big him up before the podcast, don't we? Say, like, stop crying now. Come on, <laughs> yeah. you don't want to hear. You know, people don't want to hear. Here we crying. go again. It's going to be <laughs> the water works. <laughs> yeah. um, basically, yeah. So I've done two exams. I've got my final one tomorrow. I thought it was today, but yeah, it's tomorrow. So uh, I'll just be crying some last minute revision after this. But um, yeah, basically, once I've done that, then I'm going to have a big long break till September, and then. Um, got my final project then which i can do every year so it's just so much more manageable Great, now man. um yeah it's just oh, so I suppose much the one thing i will say is actually have a break yeah. don't yeah don't sign up for something don't say you'll do something don't do freelance work just no I, I in fact yeah i've just turned down a freelance one but um i uh yeah i've got a couple of like things i want to do just <laughs> for fun like yeah. i'd like to do <laughs> like uh <laughs> like build a skyscraper yeah <laughs> Well, my next challenge is really easy. Yeah, I, I do want to build a barn, but anyway, that's separate. But um, <laughs> I want to, um, I, don't, I want to play around, uh, like playing around with some sort of like facial recognition oh. code. Just have a, a little go at that. Yeah, uh, I just thought that'd be a fun thing to do. So I want to do that. But um, other than that, no, I'm not. I'm not doing any programming in my spare time. So, so, so none of that, like that facial way. recognition. Yeah, facial recognition. Yeah. Other than facial recognition. So is the facial recognition, is that to do, yeah. will that be at all to do with the your funding your project or is it just something you just mm. want to have some fun with? No, nothing at all. But um, no, I don't, yeah, I, in the last module I did sort of, we did look at like biometrics a little bit and um, and also one of the things that I'm interested in is like um, like neural networks and I thought I could combine the two and, and try to do something, something really kind of simple like just, literally iterating through pixels but trying to find correlations in in patterns that kind of thing oh absolutely uh, um, yeah <laughs> i think oh, i saw on twitter that john oh, resig did the the other thing the, the same thing the other day actually but i don't know what what algorithm he used or what what system he used to do it but um yeah i don't know i just like you know so many things i wanted to do but i can't do because i've had to concentrate on my uni study so uh 
yeah, but I, I'm not going to do anything extreme, to be honest with you. I'm just going to try and chill out and... Uh, and build a barn as well as <laughs> facial well, recognition software. The barn's going to be like a 10-year project, I reckon, something like that. So, so how, is, yeah. how is the house? So you've moved into the house. You're actually using the internet from the house, which sounds okay, fingers crossed. Yeah, well, I'm getting half a megabit download it about sounds the same. fine i, I mean it i don't know whether you actually can do it's anything hard, else with the internet connection while you're using skype but at the moment it sounds yeah, perfect yeah. but anyway i've got infinity arriving on the 27th and i'm now estimated up to 20 megabits uh, per second download which would be pretty decent yeah. because literally i'm in the middle of nowhere now and i couldn't get infinity where i was when i was in the middle of town <laughs> it's just it's solid ridiculous it's solid. but isn't yeah, it weird so. that they call it Infinity, but it's not really Infinity? It's Why isn't Finity. that like you know advertising? Yeah. You know, lies, propaganda. Yeah, and certainly like BT, they have Infinity and then Infinity Two, which is like <laughs> what? Which is faster, and it's kind of like I kind of think you should pay for what you get rather than the service that you sign up for. But you know, I don't know. I know it's uh, in your in Mickey's really well ideal like world, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But yeah, um, but other than that, yeah, just. Yeah, that's work treating you. Work is good. Um, you know when you get to that stage where you've got like you've been working on like four or five projects for ages, and yeah. then they talk to an end. Oh it's yes, like, happy yeah, days at that really nice stage. But um, yeah, I was telling you Ed this morning, but from both one who hasn't heard, but yeah, I've just been playing with some PayPal code, and and you know that really annoying thing where like people could just basically open up developer tools and change the total to zero, yeah, and then go through to basket. So. The way I've combated that in the Just pack. on the buy now button is not, is that right? You can do it on the cart as well. Okay. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so the way I've done it in the past is just kind of reconcile the payment amount and the order amount when you yep. get to the, the IPN stage. But, um, obviously decided that wasn't really up to much anymore. So sort of looked into it and, um, there's a really cool way that you can like encrypt your HTML form. So when they open up the developer tools, all I'll see is just like a big long hash basically. And then, when you go to checkout, it then comes up and says, oh, two items at this amount, blah, blah, blah. So there's nothing you can change, really. Or you could, but it would just break. So. That's really... How does that work, then? Is that... Mm. What type of encryption stuff? I'm glad you asked, Ed. Yeah, I'm glad you no, asked. I thought you did. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yeah, again, it's quite cool because you use some of the stuff that I use from my uni studies. So you, you basically... You create, like, a, a public uh, certificate and a private certificate using OpenSSL. And then you get like a certificate from PayPal and using those free, oh, I'm trying to think the algorithm now, is it RSA? Uh, yeah, you basically create this um, encryption function. I think the algorithm to do the encryption is triple des or something like that. But yeah, it just you, you have these free certificates and then it, you encrypt this, uh, the HTML, and then that goes through to PayPal and they decrypt it and uh, magic happens basically. So yeah. I'd, I'd, actually, I'll put some in the show notes because there was an um, article that was really, really yeah, good. Yeah, that's cool. So, so, because I mean, I never really played much with the PayPal stuff. So, you can say you yeah. actually can in the form when you submit it to PayPal, just say I want to edit this form and change it to zero. And unless you, you do reconcile it in the IPN afterwards to say to make sure that they've what you've got from PayPal back is what you actually correct. want. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, it is illegal. Like, I think it's, is it like the Compute, Computer Misuse Act, 1994, 1984? I don't know. But, um, yeah, yeah. But you even can even do if you it didn't change it to like zero, stuff. you just change it to a little less. You yeah, know, you have something to one P. Yeah, or else PayPal will kick it out. But, uh, but no, yeah. I mean, you know, people wouldn't notice if you just took a, like, you know, 10 quid off it or something. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Maybe. I don't I'm know. sure a lot of sites don't. But, Maybe um, too. We should go on a little shopping spree and see what we can get by this. Yeah, I know. Let's just make a bot. I mean, you could just make a script that just goes across these websites, finds out which pattern it is, and then tries it. Because I remember a couple of times something similar to that happened on a site that we worked at, in that company that we all worked at together. (laughs) Yeah. And I remember, do you know the the company with the prams? Yes. Yes. It happened more than once there, I think. Um, Really? But then I guess there's there's no real recourse, because I guess all all the, the... Responsible person can say, "Oh well, I just follow the thing on the website, and it, that's that's what happened." That's the thing, isn't it? It's then like your word against theirs. Yeah. yeah and how do they know you've there. tampered with it, and it's not your browser? Like maybe yeah. you could say, "Oh, it's an extension yeah. on my browser or my router." You know, exactly. kind of rewrote the you know. So competition for next week, then. <laughs> <laughs> whoever can get <laughs> yeah, whoever can get the best car, <laughs> yeah, for the cheapest price. We yeah. want price to then how cheap you can get it and exactly, actually get it yeah. to your doorstep with a picture. <laughs> but I have noticed, like, uh, I think it's like SecPay. There, there's does like you don't have to do anything, and it 
if you do change something on developer tools, when you go through to checkout, it it says no. So I don't know how that that happens, to be honest with you. Mm. Um, oh, maybe. Do you reckon it's like maybe like the secret key? Maybe all the prices then key, come up to like there a must check be some sort of like checksum. Yeah, yeah, but then they thinking. then read it and go, "Oi, this doesn't make sense to what you've it actually given be. me." It must be. Yeah, I'm sure of it. Uh, I can't see of any other way. So yeah, if anyone knows, Ryan, let us know. Yeah. But yeah, I imagine it's a checksum. I guess. So yeah, but that's basically that's me in a nutshell. Awesome. And we've right, got and... Uh, we've got Justin Delucia yeah. live from the yeah. toilet. Do you know what? I've moved. Have you? Moved? <laughs> <laughs> have you just I'm put the baby in the toilet? Not in the toilet, but in the bathroom. I'm just, I'm just going to have to speak slightly quieter than I thought I would. Okay, no worries. You can still hear me, can't you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Sounds good. Yeah. So, so why awesome. are you? Why were you hiding in the toilet? I suppose is what the audience really want to know. <laughs> well, Michael will be able to relate to this. <laughs> I've got a very, uh, very young baby and uh, a very tired wife, and, uh, <laughs> and the I two don't want to together. Either of them. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. yeah, so she's be- bedtime's normally about seven o'clock. So in fact, I haven't actually been on the podcast since. Um, I don't think maybe since she's been born. I don't know. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah, so. so yeah, so sleeping sleeping's interesting. I don't know. I don't know what um, your experience of it was, Michael, but yeah, we've had quite a hard time. <laughs> well, I know what your experience is, so I don't really want to say. But uh, yeah, actually, I do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, Toby was really good. Like, from, <laughs> from <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> uh, even when he was first born, he only ever woke up once in the night, and then um, from you know, a you kick problems. a man while he's down. You know, when you're kicking a man while he's down, that's what you're doing there. <laughs> We're so lucky. For a month old, he, he slept through. Um, but... Do you want me to put that in context? <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so Nora, she's now uh, seven and a half months, and yeah. she will wake up at at least at least three times a night. Oh, man. Uh, and she's been doing that for the past seven and a half months. But often it's more than that. Like, and how so long after... is she before she wakes? Like, is it free? Oh, uh, she can. No, she can take uh, like an hour to go back to sleep, Whoa, but not man. not always. But it, but yeah, that happens regularly. So, and if she's ill, then yeah, forget it. Your life is over. <laughs> <laughs> and do you take it in turns, you and Jen, or? Um, not really. I do feel a bit guilty about it, but um, I I just I struggle to to it's do hard. it and and, and to go to work at the same time. But I'm trying at the moment. We're trying to do like. I, I do a specific period of the night and I'll wake up for that. It, you know, when she wakes up, I'll do that one. But, um, yeah, it's not been easy. It's been an interesting learning, learning curve. But yeah. It's interesting because you, you guys were talking about, um, one of the recent podcasts was working from home. Yeah. And, um, like that's going to be particularly relevant to me, hopefully, because I think we're going to be doing that. Hopefully I'll be doing that before the end of the year. Yeah. This is big news. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's sort of what's going on in my life. But, um, but like you've just done it and been through all that stuff and all the things you were talking about, like all the things that go through in my mind and I'm worried about and all this sort of stuff and rural yeah. broadband connection and all that kind of thing. So it was like, <laughs> it was a really good podcast actually. Cool. Um, I think so I'm like, you'll actually, oh, go it, it's really good because you can, if you're working from home, it means you can do things like, like when, cause obviously Jen, I'm sure is like absolutely shattered most of the time. Right. And uh, you'll yeah. be able to do things like just get up and, and, feed the baby and just, you know, let her catch up on sleep and stuff. And it, it yeah. is a lot. It does help a lot when you've got a baby. Um, so hopefully that will improve things for you. I'm sure. But, but I'm sure like, you know, yeah. she's pretty good to the point now where she will start sleeping more. And right, I, I'm saying this, I don't know. I've only got one baby. <laughs> <laughs> and your baby's perfect. It's all right, Mike, we get it. Okay. Your baby's perfect. <laughs> Life's so good for you, Michael. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Plain sailing. But it is, it's the best. But thing. it is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's all a creep me, but it, being a parent is, it's the best thing in the world. It's awesome. It's worth, uh, it, it's worth it. And to be fair, this will make you feel better, Justin. Toby now is a real monster. He is such a handful. Oh, really? Like how good he was, like first sort of six months. He's now not, he's not being naughty. He's just, he wants to explore everywhere and, and, and he has, he's going through like this shouting stage. So it's, it's hard, but, uh, I think you keep forgetting this is a development podcast, but yeah. Oh no, but Sorry, the yeah. element of kill, you know, babies as well. You know, this yeah. is kind of yeah. development, <laughs> life development skills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Anyway. No, he's up. <laughs> yeah. I think I may have just woken her up, so. Oh, no, oh. don't say that. Don't oh. say that. Oh. Oh. Oh, it does matter, don't worry. <laughs> but anyway, Justin, so, yeah, we haven't had you on yeah, the podcast yeah. since, like, last year. Yeah. And I think with that, that podcast, we spoke about design and stuff like that. And I suppose, what have you been up to? What, like, cool projects, new things and stuff, other than, of course, in your life, you know, with the baby, etc. Like, Yeah, yeah, yeah there's, yeah, been, there's been talk of JavaScript and stuff as well, hasn't yeah, there? Yeah, and the old fake on the old been. Twitters. Yeah, the old Twitters. Yeah, ones. there's been lo- yeah, loads of stuff, actually. It's been really good. Uh, it's been um, a good a good sort of past six months or so when I've, I felt like I got to a point where I got a little bit bored with everything and now I feel like just a bit more injection of en- energy and really interested and motivated to, to learn and expand and all this kind of thing. And, um, you know, it's just the same in the design world as it is in development in the sense that it's, everything's just changing all the time and it's like, you, you never feel like you're on top of it, but it sort of just pulls you along. You just can't stop, um, you know, I don't know, getting into new things. So, um, so yeah, it's been really interesting, um, stuff that's been going on. And I've been trying to, yeah, like you said, do, do a bit more, um, sort of branching out and, uh, trying to make some kind of way towards being more of a like kind of full stack, but in the design sense, um, and, and sort of try my hand. Uh, doing a bit more front end stuff and, and getting my head around JavaScript, which has been really, That's really working. fun, um, but really challenging. But I've really enjoyed it because I feel fairly comfortable with like HTML and CSS and that kind of thing. And I think as, as a designer, that's like nowadays you just that's an absolute given. You got to have that. I think it's, yeah, but, like to to sing you a bit of praise. I think I said the same thing last time you were on. Like working with you is was a like just a touch of fresh air from working with other other designers yeah. that don't know HTML and don't know CSS and like for instance if you work with a a print designer or a leaflet designer versus you who is a an actual web designer it's just yeah it's it's night and day yeah I completely agree with that oh, sorry thanks, man. I've interrupted your it's... flow there <laughs> <laughs> no no it's alright I mean I could there's so many things I could talk about but like there's so many things I feel are changing in the industry and one of them is is kind of like the role, I mean, the role designer is something that's probably going to continue changing all the time. It's just like the role developer. These things kind of like, it's almost like, you know, little cells that multiply and, and things branch out and stuff like that. But like, I think when, when I started in the industry, there was a massive lack of, I think, really good creative design because maybe technology didn't quite allow us to get there. And so, when I started, people doing web design, and I include myself in it, maybe we weren't designing in a particularly interesting way, but we were doing it because we knew that would work and that would be, you know, easy to build or whatever. And now I think you've got, you've got sort of front end developers and you've got interaction designers and all this kind of stuff in between purely creative layout people who can come up with a great idea and then work with lots of other people to make that become a reality. Whereas in the past, I don't think that wasn't, that could have happened because it was someone was like, well, I've got this vision. It's a bit out there. Don't know how to do it. And maybe they just, there wasn't all those links in between. So, but for someone working for a small company like me, I think the challenge is how do you do all that yourself or do a little bit of all of that yourself, if you see what I mean? I so think there was like a lot of, I mean, we've all seen this, but there was a lot of designers who moved over from the print world and just started yeah. designing for the web. And I think like you say, maybe that you could get away with that 10 years ago, but I just don't think you can now. You have to yeah. kind of understand a little bit more about it, I guess. I think it's the maturity, yeah. isn't it, as well, of the of like the profession now? Because you just say like yeah. there's so many different avenues you can go down. And like you say, with the, yeah. being in a small company, it is kind of you do have to wear all these hats. You know, you can't have yeah. one person that does each thing. So I suppose, kind of, my, mm. what I would say is like, how do you wear all the hats? Do you kind of think in a certain way for certain jobs, or do you always kind of bear everything in mind when you're designing? You know, and how is it going to work for SEO, and how is it going to work? You know, on the on the mobile and desktop, and how do you keep your flow, <laughs> kind of creativity flow? You know, at the initial stages. I think if I'm being perfectly honest, I, I think I, I, I just resign myself to knowing that I'm not going to be able to do it all in every project because ultimately working, you know, working for a commercial company, you know what it's like. It's at the end of the day, it's, it's the making the client happy and getting the job out of the door and 
in making sure it's profitable and that kind of thing. So you end up, you compromise on a lot of that stuff, which you don't want to do, but you end up doing. So I think that's why doing your own projects, like Michael was saying, like sometimes you just can't help. There's certain things you just have to do because you feel like, I don't know, that you, you want to and it will never fit into anything you're doing in your normal day job. So I think um, that's what I've, I've been trying to do, in, do a bit more over the past six months or so, particularly with like kind of a focus on trying to get my head around animation more. Because at the beginning of the year, when um, like I was doing a bit of research and looking at blogs and all that kind of stuff and getting my head around what maybe the trends would be for 2015, and it was very much animation was going to carry on and develop and be more and more and, and, and be more less of a kind of a little frivolous add-on more of like a fundamental component of communicating whatever content was on the website um and i think that's it's been interesting with the whole like material design come out and all that kind of stuff because because that um very much talks about motion being a fundamental part of the design and that kind of thing so um um I might just have to pause. Can I, yep, not can a problem, I call man. you back in just a sec? Yep, not a problem. Sure. Oh, there the, we the, go. Oh. The joy of being a dad. <laughs> you know, the, I just had to Google material design. Yeah, I know. I was <laughs> so, thinking, so, yeah. So, this is kind oh, of, material design is just the Android. Um, oh, thing. right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The material I, uh, design. I was just going to say, I mean, not, Justin isn't here to actually comment on it, but I feel like a dinosaur and I'm kind of fighting the wave of progression because I, I i hear a lot of people saying now that if you design for mobile first and then you build up and i, I just i hate that like and i know people say oh yeah like 80 percent of people now browse the web on mobile rather it than desktop is scary yeah. it i is. hate that I, really yeah. uh, well, for me yeah browsing the web on a mobile is never going to be an enjoyable experience I, no I, but it's i guess it's just how how it's done these days isn't it like yeah i, I went to did I, did I tweet that i went to that conference last week yeah yeah, yeah. Said, the yeah. Free yeah i went to a conference last week <laughs> despite having not done anything for it <laughs> um it was i can't remember i haven't even got the memory stick to have a look at the name of it um but it was at the barbican center in london anyway there was it was yeah. it was kind of useful like the, it wasn't really kind of geared towards exactly or the the talks that run on the day that I went to weren't exactly geared to, towards front end specifically but there was there was a really good talk by an American guy and I can't remember his name um, really really good talker <laughs> but he was basically talking about the importance of designing for mobile and, and putting mobile first and it was basically all it was was an hour and a half of him putting out stats of saying like five yeah. years ago it was it was five percent of people browsing on mobile now it's seventy five percent and all, all the this kind of stuff and it was actually quite an eye opener to see and I, I mean it's, I guess it's stuff that we probably all knew anyway but it was nice to actually have it kind of laid out and said look you really need to be concentrating on mobile because yeah. this is where all your business is coming from and, and, and what have you so it was it was very interesting anyway and then I just hijacked your point there as well. <laughs> yeah. was that uh, just that was that the old brewery the venue or no it wasn't it was at the Barbican oh the Barbican oh, yes right. it was yeah um, so it was a it was a week long conference it was called the no I can't remember off the top of my head what it was called, but I will dig out some paraphernalia from it in the next couple of minutes so I can actually work <laughs> out what it was called. But it was a, a week-long thing. Um, yeah. A couple of the other guys went to a, a grunt workshop. A couple of the other guys from the office went to a grunt workshop there um, on the Monday, which was like an all-day thing. And you were basically sitting there writing, writing yeah. grunt, essentially, and learning grunt. Um, and they got a lot, of, a lot of really good use out of that. But I think it would have been more beneficial if I'd gone to, to that one rather than the day that I did go to. Um, yeah. Talks were a bit of a mishmash and, and what have you, but it, it was it was interesting anyway. It opened your eyes, was... doesn't it? To different no, it really does. Yeah, nice. and the food was good. That's always a win at a conference. Yes. Always a win. Oh yes, and I got a free laptop bag, which yeah. I subsequently, oh, yes. oh, which I yeah. subsequently put in the bin because it was a bit crap, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and a free memory stick and a pen. And I've still got the pen. There's nothing special about the pen. It's just I'm always short of pens. So <laughs> you always yeah always lose yeah. pens. So you need another. Um, but no, I, I agree yeah. with, I, I, I add on to the mobile thing. Um, my builder, uh, the company I work for, the, they know it, they've noticed and, you know, a lot of tradesmen even just use their phone for the internet now. We yeah. don't, we yeah. find that probably about 80% use just mobile phone and that's it. Yeah. And that's scary because if you think yeah. about it, the amount of testing we actually do for mobile compared to doing on the desktop, because we are all developing on a desktop, it's not as much. Mm. And yep. One of the things that our uh, designer, a really good designer, Will did, um, he released the new homepage. They actually released it yesterday, last night. And it is 
amazing um it was he he went through you know he's similar to justin that he is you know a web des- designer he's not yep. you know a de- you know a, a, well i'm sure he can do obviously do like print media and stuff digital media like that but you know he he specializes in the web and you know the fact he worked what he did was he went from mobile first kind of approach where this was his first time i think well, i can't you know put words in his mouth but hopefully get him on to talk about it and you know he, he kind of went from a mobile first approach that then scales out into desktop and you can see from it, actually looking at it, that it was, you can see that the mobile version has been as much care has been put into that as the desktop version, if not more, yeah. because it's, it was actually yep. tailored towards that. And one of the cool things, actually, if you, if you scroll around on it, you can see the parallax of little nuggets of like, you know, the, the clouds move and stuff when you scroll a little yep. bit and like, you know, the, the awesome feedback thing. But another thing is like, if you actually inspect the elements of the actual people, the tradesmen there, it's actually SVGs. So that is an oh. SVG of each of them, which right. is so crazy because then you can scale them as much as you want. So yep. that's just that's me being geeky. Cool. But yeah, no, it's a really amazing front page. And yeah, just think it's awesome. Well. And I guess the big challenge as well for developing for mobile is that it is such, a, there's, there's thousands of different platforms. It's not like, oh yeah, just oh, tra- check, yeah. It in, check it in Chrome, Firefox and Internet Explorer. Like you've got different screen sizes, different devices. And it's, yeah, it's, it's well, just that, a- that's exactly it, isn't it? Because you, you've now kind of got this whole different playing field. And I know like a couple of years ago, responsive was the new way and stuff and now mobile first, but yeah, I, I really do find it. I mean, we get, you know, in our kind of the back end world of like, you know, new technologies come, new paradigms come, you know, and all this, but as much now in the front end world, it, it's not simply just a web page anymore. It's yeah. it's a digital experience, what they want to call it, you know. Yeah. And yeah, it is as hard, if not harder. And it's caring for SEO, you know, is you know you're kind of battling with SEO because you you know obviously you want to be playing nice with Google. Obviously, it's uh-huh. just Google really you care about. I mean, obviously, Bing's another one, but who cares about Bing? Uh, that's a bad <laughs> idea there. But, you know, um, and, and things like, you know, oh, what, where can that be a link? How can we name that link? It would be better if it sounded like that. But for Google, it would be better if it sounded like that. And, you know, Google so, becomes so good at weeding out things. You have to be so careful with how you actually word things and how you, you know, kind of, you know, add to the add to content that, you know, is meaningful for the page, but also may help you in rankings and stuff. But, yeah, no, it, 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 there's so many different hats you've got to wear. And, yeah, I admire people who can actually do it all. Like like Justin does, you know, where he actually has to kind of think about everything while he's doing a design because I don't think I could. I think for me, I would find that I'll design it, then have to kind of refactor it in my head of, you know, development of like one problem, one time kind of thing. TDD style ripple loop of like, okay, I've done that. All right, now I've got to make it so it actually does this, then that, then that. So, yeah, I don't know how people do it at the, at the same time, kind of think these things through. Yeah. I mean, I just, I'm, I just completely agree. Like what you say with the stats phrase and stuff, it's like you, you can't argue that that's the way things are now. But I don't know. I just, I don't like it. I like. <laughs> yeah. I, at, I don't like it. I want it to change back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. But like looking at my builder now, like on desktop, I was just comparing it, and like I just rather, if I had the choice, I'd want to do it on a. a do what I was going to do on desktop. Oh, it exactly seems like a nicer same. experience to me. Yeah, I'm but exactly then, the same. But, but then, then I suppose. Again, like, Oh, sorry. sorry go on. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say, like, your parents, do they use a, de- yeah. a desktop still? Yeah. They're probably, no, more laptops. That, or, anything, or laptops. So, so oh, my yeah, mom, I guess. My mom yeah. just uses tablets. She uses yeah. a tablet, an iPad. Uh, my dad primarily uses an iPad, but for work, he'll use a laptop. And, yeah. you know, yeah. their, their, their actual, you know, kind of, you know, kind of personal viewing of things is just on an iPad. And that's kind of yeah. crazy that that's the medium it's come from. You know, we, we've gone from, you know, having big, you know, small displays, little VDUs, then to bigger, 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 bigger. Then we're back to yeah. an iPad. Well, now we're back to small, but an iPad. And a whole different, different interaction because now it's touch. And yeah, yeah. it's yeah. insane. It really is kind of crazy. And yeah, Mickey, I'm with you. Let's, let's change it back, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Tim Berners-Lee did not think this was going to happen. He didn't want this to happen. I agree with you. Exactly. Yeah. No, I think it's all really interesting as well. Like mobile, mobile websites these days, uh, they're kind of it's becoming more and more of a blurred line between like a, a native app and a yeah a, and a website essentially, isn't it? Because obviously, with all the new frameworks and stuff that are out, you can pretty much simulate the app experience in a in a in a mobile I website. Completely agree. That's going to be my next point. That surely the the days for apps like uh, native apps are now numbered. I would yeah. have thought. But they um, always say that, don't they? But then it, it, it always keep at the at the moment. There's still you can still mm. there's still limitations. I think 
um, where the native still wins out, where you still have to have the APIs that are right. Like things like Titanium and PhoneGap are great, but they only get you so far. Yeah, and if you want mm-hmm. to do something like a game, other than like actually, let's segue on, you know, afterwards to a certain person on this podcast game. But you know, yeah. like, you know, games that require lots of hardware acceleration and stuff, even though they got WebGL and all these things, they still mm-hmm. you still need to deal with the hardware that you're on, and you yeah. can't be that ag- agnostic. But actually, segueing on to because I don't know if you guys checked out the Twitter today this uh, this afternoon actually. Which part of Twitter? Pitch part of Twitter, the three devs <laughs> that made the, you know, that's it, yeah, you've got this thing called Twitter, you know, there's a yeah. couple of tweets yeah. on it, you know. Did you see that post, you know, the, the, the post that the <laughs> Yeah, that post, oh yeah, because only a couple yeah, of these like days, you know, um, but no, so this was uh, the three devs and a maybe account, and our good friend, let me quickly get the tweet and the thing. Our What's good, your dude, oh sorry, go on. I was say, our good friend, Jimmy Burrell. Um, yes. he oh, I like playing, Jimmy Burrell. Yeah, yeah, he's been playing That's Space good. Beer Cave. Has he's he? Our oh, I was about that. that. Yeah, he oh, good has lad. played, and he has actually screenshot and sent in the high score to beat. Oh, now. what a legend! So he's winning then. So yeah, Boom. unless anyone gets him, Jimmy, because he's yeah, yeah he is a legend. His high score is one thousand five hundred seventy-eight. So there you go. It's amazing. Good work, Jimmy Burrell. Uh, so yeah, he could be having a t-shirt swinging his way. Hell yeah! Well, I, I, I was oh. going to ask you about this because I kind of missed out on what was happening i remember you t- talking about you wanted to do it in your spare time but yeah so it's like is it in like the i don't know what's it the google it's in uh, the google play store yeah i want to get it in the the app store i've got everything that i need to get it in the app store except for space on my hard drive to install xcode um oh, so i can awesome. then spit out the the iphone whatever file that's called um but yeah it's in the in the google play store so what i said was if anyone the game's called Sp- space beer cave to anyone that's listening um and i said that by the 12th of june Whoever sends in a screen grab with the highest score, I will send them a three devs T-shirt anywhere in the world. Um, oh, that's yeah. So, so, cool. so, so yeah. So if yeah. anyone, if anyone's got an Android phone, just download it. Um, I've had a, a load of mates reviewed it and stuff. So the, the reviews are kind of good. I think it's like four point <laughs> two, four point two or something. That's yeah. interesting language used in some of the reviews. Uh, there is, yeah. But then there was there was a, like a legitimate user that that had obviously downloaded the game and saw that it wasn't like Final Fantasy or some big epic thing like this. So he, he left a review saying, well, like, all in capitals, like, beware, all reviews are faked. Oh, my God. Because <laughs> like, it's like, so, these are the so, reviews yeah. you pay for. Exactly, yeah. So it's like, well, so people that, yeah, are actually going to read those reviews and think they're real reviews? <laughs> like, oh, yeah. And it's like, it's a free game. There's no ads. Like, yeah. why, why are you beware? Yeah, why do you people? care so much about yeah. I mean, exactly. Jeez. It's just, I, it, do you know what, man? Like, it looks awesome. And I it need, the, I, I actually, after this, I, is it right if I quickly get the APK off you? Absolutely. I've got, my, yeah. I've got my Amazon Fire Stick ready. Oh, cool, yeah. waiting for it. Actually, oh. another thing, and I almost bought it yesterday. I was so close. Amazon are clever. The Fire, mm. have you noticed that the Amazon Fire phone, the 32 gigabyte version, is only £99 at the moment? No. Wow. £99. I don't know whether they're getting a new one, but the specs on it are pretty darn good. It's only available till Thursday, so it's only available for another two days. It's okay. on 02, but it locked, but it's £99 for an Android That's device, really which is pretty good. crazy. I mean, even the- 32 gigabytes, so even if it's just use it for like a media player, like just, yeah. you know, yeah. you've, I, I'm still tempted but I think my girlfriend would kill me. Um, yeah, ninety nine pound. That's such a good price. It's gone down from yeah. two hundred ninety nine to ninety nine pound now. How yeah. old is that phone? Like, is it? Uh, it's a it is thing? Hot, it's about six months old. Right. Oh wow. Yeah, it it looks awesome as well. And and, and again, like the fire, I was talking about, I spoke about it last week. The Fire TV oh, stick is just awesome. The Fire, t- I love a- Android, um, Amazon. Sorry, are doing great things. They've they've got their yeah. own, you know, kind of skin in quotes over the fire os over you know an amazon over android distro yeah and everything like that and it's nice and everything. yeah so and, and it's got oh, a, that nice is a nice looking phone i might be tempted to get one of those i know because the battery on my nexus is just absolutely terrible well also it's just like just to see it like if it's any i mean for 99 pounds yeah. you have another phone that you can just use if you ever need to might do that yeah, I think I'm going to have to now Cause as you, well. Because even I'm though it's me. locked, presumably you can root it and chuck regular Android on it. Yeah, oh, well, this is this is what I was thinking, actually. I think, yeah, you must be able to, like, sig- uh, if if you can do that, I may actually have a look. Because if you can do that, I may actually have to buy one. Yeah, I'm going to do some research, and if yeah. that is the case, then I'm definitely going to yeah, buy one, I am going to. I'm blaming you as well. Thanks, man. You've just made me buy that. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, they're, they're kind of, I think ninety nine pound is just a sweet spot of like, oh my god, you getting that for a phone? You're kidding me! I'm yeah. buying it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no. Other than that, so I've just yeah, cost. I've just <laughs> made Fraser spend ninety nine pound and me. Um, 
<laughs> and a blog post I actually found. Well, no, not a blog post, sorry. So I'll talk about this first, actually, is um, Troy Hunt, uh, our good friend, you know, not good friend of the show, but actually I spoke to him last week and he's a really good on Twitter, great, you know, personality on Twitter, and he's got lots of interesting things to say. He's a security guy. Um, he's got a website called HaveIBeenPwned.com, and I don't know whether you've checked it out before. It's a really interesting... So what he does is when um, big leaks happen, such as scary yeah. things, such as, you know, like Amazon leaks and all these things, you uh-huh. know, a dump of them going, you know, maybe someone gets a database dump. Uh, what he does is he gets... It's quite a simple thing, but it's a very clever thing. He gets them and he just catalogs them. And what you can oh, do is cool. actually t- enter your email address and just see if you've been pwned, in quotes. So you better check, you know, and if you find, oh, oh okay, this account, maybe I do need to change my passwords and stuff oh. and everything. So I found that I've been pwned on the Adobe uh, breach that happened in 2013. So fortunately, I've changed my passwords. People should be using LastPass, yo. But no, it's interesting. <laughs> like, you should just t- type in your password. Uh, not your password. Yeah, type in your password. He's genius. <laughs> type in your email address, and you'll be able to see if you've actually, you know, had, a, had been compromised at all. Yeah, I'm on the Adobe one as well. Are you on the Adobe one? <sighs> yeah. What about you, Mickey? What, have you got any? Uh... I Well, I, when I loaded up my builder, I forgot that I can't have a Skype call and load a web page at the same time. Oh, so... I, yeah, I, I can't look. We'll, but we'll, I'll, I will we'll, have I'll let you look. I'll let you look later on. Yeah, you get. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and then another link before hopefully Justin does a, a reappear uh, is <laughs> a so, so, someone's written a blog post about writing a web server in pure PHP. You know, right. from the socket level, actually, you know how to interpret the HTTP request, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Very yeah. cool idea. I'll put that in the show notes. So I've, I've read that. It was an interesting read. Another another uh, uh, YouTube video this time, actually, is a talk that... Let me see who actually did it. I only know him by Everest because, um, hopefully, fingers crossed, I still need to talk to him. Uh, we should get Adam on from Full Stack Radio. Uh, I've been really bad since I've gone off holiday. It's been kind of hectic, so hopefully I'll get an email him, get him, hope, you know, book him in to get on the podcast. But he spoke to Everest. Uh, Everest, I think his name is, actually. And it, his name's Kostatin Kud. Kudra Stoff, sorry, I completely butchered that, but you can see it in the show notes. <laughs> and he, he on the on the podcast, he was talking about mocking, and he was talking about the different styles, the London and the Chicago uh, schools of uh, TDD. So the mockist right. and the classic class, classicist view, classicist view, which is like state versus behaviour. And um, yeah, it's really interesting podcast. So I definitely think you should check that out. And also he does this, uh, at Lara, uh, one of the things he mentions on there is a Laracon talk that he did. And it's designing how objects talk through mocking. And he d- it's a very good talk. Really recommend it. I can't really, you know, I don't think I can give it justice by summarizing. So I think the best thing you can do is just go and actually it's only a 40 minute talk. So it's well worth it. And yeah, so those are my show. Those are my picks for the week. I don't know if any of you guys got any picks for the week uh let me think i was going to ask you about um psr7 or something um <laughs> or something yeah what did i see on twitter something had been released recently yeah so uh, psr7 has now been yeah. accepted um i think yeah. we spoke to it about it with bo simonson because he was working on it um, yeah. and, and essentially what it is i think is it's just a standard for how a HTTP message should be laid out right so, you know, how we should represent a HTTP message in PHP land. Because you know how we, you know, like you get a response. So say it's like a response and a request. So, you know, how, you know, an interface, I think it's only yeah. an interface uh, of like, these are the methods you need to, spot, you know, because one of the things that was um, kind of what we wanted to do in the in the PHP world was Symfony had a request and response, well, a request, you know, uh, object. And we wanted to standardize that really because we're like, look, every you know, as long as because things like uh, it was stack, which allowed you know to have these composable operations, uh, stacking up different things and creating different you know requests, we'd be going through filtering through these requests. Yeah, that's a really weird word, isn't it? Uh, but you know, <laughs> essentially, what that is is it's using this standardized. Okay, this is how a request works. I give you a request, you just give me a request back, whether you want to do something with it or not. You then pass in, okay, what delegation? So you say, okay. Once I've done this thing, you either do you get on to doing this. Um, my mind's gone blank on what that is actually called. I'll, well, I'll be kicking and screaming myself after the podcast, but <laughs> yes, yeah, sorry, audience. But yeah, so what this is is I think it's just a standard for that. Um, and what I'll do is I'll read up about it more this week because I've been completely off the radar with this, um, and I only realised it actually became standardised a couple of days ago, wasn't it? I think 
if I'm right in thinking. Yeah, it was. I think so, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, but I think a lot of work's been gone into this and stuff. So hopefully it should be... All I can think is just good things. I think the PSR, you know, people, they do great work, you know, Phil Sturge and then that lot. And, you know, they really yeah. are better in the community because I do think stuff like the standards for this... Like, I mean, it's like... It's as simple as one of the, like, the logging standard, the logger standard. You know, now yeah. you know, as long as you've got the logger interface, if anything, you know, abides with the logger interface, boom, you know you can use it. It's the same thing with yeah. this, you know. It's hopefully what we'll be able to do is Laravel, Symphony, you know, uh, Zend, you know, all these different frameworks will all use this request and response. And and hopefully, in theory, you'll be able to add middlewares. That's the one, middlewares, different middlewares that can all be used by the same, you know, same for all these different frameworks and be agnostic and not mind that you, you know, eventually want to be a Laravel framework, but I want to use something that I was using in Symphony because it's just been agnostic and it's just before it happens, before or after you know yeah. those requests so yeah and it can actually treat i mean in fairness it could actually just it just treats the framework as another middleware because you know you input the request you get a response well, no you input the re- request yeah you get a response back you could just add another middleware this is a laravel middleware why i mean crazily enough you could probably say i want a middleware that is laravel that then goes to a symphony you know middleware afterwards if it needs to which could be yeah. insane to think but you know you can you can actually you know stack these middlewares up to create and compose these amazing applications just yeah dynamically which is pretty awesome but yeah so anyway so mm. yeah uh i don't know whether we are gonna get justin on the line again our special guest yeah our special guest has, has been he had a lot of good things to say at the beginning which is sad he did, know, he, did. He, he did he did um yeah. let's is he let's... even online no no he's, he's not. not online no let's have a quick look Hmm. Yeah, I think we should let him be. I think he's having Maybe, uh, yeah. daddy issues. <laughs> well, um, his dad. By the way, can but, we just we just say so, Mickey? You, your baby, yeah, had a great time the last month, couple of months. Yeah, it's it's been easy. <laughs> play <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, yeah, I feel bad about that. I, and I should say, actually, sorry, but Lou, of course, Lou's not here this this week. You know, we need to get back on. Right. Sadly, yeah. during the week, Lou, Lou at the moment is jam packed with golf. He was yeah. saying to me that yeah, he literally his his whole life now is dictated by when golf's happening and so, grinder and grinder, grinder obviously as well. Oh dear. Um, <laughs> anything else? I suppose anything else, guys? You want to say this week? Because I can't. I, I think I'm good because I've been out of the web world for a while. Of, well, I suppose actually, I, I want to ask yeah. how did how did the actual what was the exam on on the weekend? Uh, okay, so the two I've done, the one that I did on Saturday was cognitive neural networks. Um, so yeah, I, I think I pretty documented pretty well, but yeah, it's just understanding like, um, conceptually really like how, how the brain works, I guess, and how it passes information around and, and how it kind of, I, I guess, like makes correlations and how, how we, how you learn basically. And, um, there's lots of interesting things in there, like, you know, back propagation, all that kind of stuff. And, um, yeah, it's just really interesting. Obviously it's not like 100 strictly computer science but it was there a lot of maths it. towards it a lot of equations and algebra and there is certainly the coursework level but in the exam it's kind of more like you know here's the equation what does this symbol mean um which oh is days yeah but it's not too bad it's um it's not it was the hardest exam i've ever done but i think for someone who is more mathematically minded they probably find it okay so um yeah but I, I fully recommend it and obviously from the computer science level like you're then implementing nature and you're making like artificial neural networks which Sound you know look at the way awesome. brain works and try and put that into a really really cool like, i really like that kind of stuff and and the other exam i had last week was um was my computer security module so um which again was was really cool and uh again i i think i've done enough to pass but yeah it's just again really cool topics about um encryption techniques like aes and and des and that's so uh, cool all those kind of stuff kind of private key public key um encryption uh certificates yeah what, um, uh, udp tcp all that kind of stuff ooh, really all the low level stuff as well that's cool ooh, yeah so what um indeed. do you do you think you're going to how have you enjoyed university again like coming going back to it and everything because i suppose now you can kind of think that this yeah. is your last that's your you, you've now done your last lecture i suppose yeah lecture? i think yeah yeah definitely yeah well, let's just, i think like looking back like certainly the first few months, I'll see, I was there with you. And, um, oh, I you think hated I, every minute. You're like, glad yeah, that, that I go. You know? <laughs> I think certainly the first few months I was thinking, there's no way I'm going to be able to do this. And I think if I'm being honest, I think you were holding my hand. Oh, that's a different story, but, um, <laughs> you, were, <laughs> you were definitely really holding my hand tight, I guess. 
for those first few months and uh, you definitely helped me out with a few things and I guess and from that point on obviously I've kind of I've, I've not asked well I hope I've not asked you for help since those first few months really you haven't I guess. spoke and, um, since to today really you know you've this is yeah, the first time you've, you've acknowledged me as a human being <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, to get to this point and know that I've passed all my exams, passed all my, well, not the exams I've just done, but the ones from last year and passed all my uni, uh, coursework assignments this year and last year, you know, I'm really proud of that. It's awesome, man. I mean, um, you're juggling I, everything. Got, yeah, that's true. But I've got friends who obsess over marks, whereas I don't, because I kind of think, well, but if I was to do those modules again now, I'd get higher marks. So that shows that I've learned. Yeah, and that's it. you're they, there to learn. You're not there to get a piece of paper that tells you something. You're there to actually okay. learn. And I think that, that could be commended. Yeah. That should be commended. And if I think of like my understanding of programming like com- now compared to then, I'm, again, I'm not saying I'm, I'm God. Don't get me wrong. I'm not at all. But, uh, but I have come a long way. I've learned a lot of things. And um, yeah, and even if like I've not understood topics completely I, I now have a better understanding and, and for the future it's really going to help me so well that's it opens would, your eyes to a lot of different things doesn't it as well like it allows you to kind of dip into security and then dip into neural networks and you never know maybe one day yeah. in your job that thing you learned there will help you you know absolutely yeah i would recommend anyone to do it i would just say you know look obviously think about your your work life balance and um and just really think about the modules that you want to do and 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 again, just the point we just mentioned about: it, don't go for marks, go for what you want to learn. What and and if you can, obviously, it's not always controllable, but not what can help you with your work, but actually what you're interested in. Because if you're interested in it, you will do a lot a lot better. Yeah. And and certainly, like for me, the, the modules that I've been scared of the most are the modules I've done the best at. That's awesome. And yeah, because you've got the fear, and you put more effort in, and you you, you get more in tune with yeah. it. And- so, so yeah, what, what what would you say? I suppose it's kind of you know completely out of the blue. But what would you say is your most favourite? What what favourite course have you done? Well, I have to say, and again, going back to you holding my hand, but the intelligent systems ones I did. I remember like the first bit of coursework I did. Like, oh yeah, the A star algorithm and the depth for DFS yeah. and all that. Yeah, I know I had to get you to help me with that, but I'm not the kind of guy that would like say, "Oh, Ed, help me with this. You help me. You give me the work, and I hand it in." I like I took that. And then I built everything from scratch and I made sure I understood everything. And, and that was, you know, again, really, really cool. And, and the second piece of course work I did for that module, you know, I did alone. I, I that really was the Monte did Carlo it. stuff and everything, wasn't it? That was cool. No, that was different. That was my was concurrency module. But, uh, the, the second one for my AI was, um, like you had this like polynomial, um, function and you had to work out what the coefficients are and you made like a genetic algorithm to work out what they oh, are. Oh, and it changes how, it checks and yeah. it adapts to it. Wow. Yeah, and I did that all by myself, and I got like seventy eight percent. And uh, you know, it's probably still my proudest achievement from that that module, really. And you know, if you told me I'd, I'd have been doing that kind of stuff, I'd have just laughed at you. You know, like, it, and it's if I can do it, I'm not just saying this. Anyone could do it. I'm not. I'm not that intelligent. I'm not that that bright. Lies, but lies, if, lies. If, if, if you well, not lies that anyone could do it, but other people can do it. Yeah. But you, so you are intelligent, so <laughs> well, no, stop putting yourself sure um, But well, certainly like, things don't come to me naturally. I have to work I have to work harder than the next guy to plus to, work to that, man. Yeah. But, so. I mean, like, have you have you noticed in your course that there are people in the same boat as you? You know, kind of, I, I don't want to, you know, give away your age, but early, you know, yeah. 30s, you know, kind of, you know, wanting yeah, to is, kind of do something different and... You know what, there's a, there is a wide range. I mean, there is a lot more younger people and probably towards, but there's people that are older than me at the same time, you know? Um, but the thing about uni is, and the thing that I love about uni, not always, but there's a lot of people really accepting of other people. And like for, on my course, it's probably, I don't know, maybe 30% French people, but those French people are awesome and they really integrate and I've got, got them well. And if I look at all the friends I've made this year, um, I think maybe, Two of them are Nigerian. One of them is Greek. You know, I I don't have any English friends from this year, and I think that is awesome. I absolutely love that. And if to get that experience is is brilliant, and just to go be with other people who want to learn is yeah. really really good. I mean, I know we've both said that you can see it the other way and you get people who who aren't there. Well, it's to the learn. people you 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 know just you're fortunately clear. enough to cut. Yeah, exactly. And it's the people you're fortunate enough to kind of you know spend time with and stuff and it sounds like you've met a lot of good group of people who are really reinforcing the fact that yeah learning is why you're there you're not there for a grade you're there to learn and it pushes you to learn more and 
That's right. Yeah, be careful who you mix with, I'd say, and, and mix with the right people who want all Don't do drugs, it. kids. All Don't bad people who believe in just grades. It's yeah. as bad as drugs. If not worse. If not I worse. mean, drugs are better, yeah. <laughs> if you go and pick one of the two, do drugs. Okay? Do drugs over people who... Yeah, do drugs over believing people yeah, who yeah, believe in grades. Again, yeah. I, sound advice on the three devs in a maybe podcast right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean... Basically, summarise. Don't do it for money. Don't do it for the certificate or whatever. Just do it because you want to do it. And um, yeah, and I think you know if you've got that attitude, then you, you'll do well. Um, sex, drugs, and education. Sex, drugs, and education in that order. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, but, yeah. How about you, Fraser? Yeah, any, any, uh, you know, kind of comments on the uh, uni front? Kind of questions? Or no, it was such a long time ago that I went to uni, so I kind of don't even know what it is these days. Um, <laughs> <laughs> And I did. You were a Manchester boy as well. So no, I was a I was at Bournemouth really? University, and then oh, I dropped I dropped out to take a job up in Manchester. Oh, that's right, that's right. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that was my my northern experience in my in my twenties after my my early birth one. But no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was going to ask you actually, uh, uh, who's going to Amsterdam? Is it obviously I'm guessing not just you? That'd be a bit creepy. But, yeah, um, it'd be a little bit creepy. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's me and my mate James. It was doing you know, that did the rowing trip. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, so he's coming, his girlfriend, and a couple of their friends as well. So, yeah, there'll be, I think there's about, there's five or six of us going, I think. So That's a good yeah. number. Yeah, yeah, it'll be good. So the idea is we get in the train to Rotterdam on Thursday morning, and then we've got a night in Rotterdam, then we're going to cycle to Amsterdam from Rotterdam, and then three days in Amsterdam, and then cycle to a ferry somewhere, and then That's get a ferry awesome. back to, to are, Essex. Are you going to try a space muffin? Uh, I don't know. I'm not really... Mm, I'd like to say no. I'll see what happens, but yeah, I'd like to say no. But so have you been there before? Sorry. I've never been, no. All right, because I'm going there for the first time as well in oh, are you? June. Yeah, oh. yeah, for a, a friend stag do. Oh, awesome. and, uh, oh, wow. I was going to say for different Are you going to try a space you muffin? Got, yeah, you've got to try um, space muffin. Uh, can I say some podcast? Uh, yeah, I pretty will. Yeah, yeah I will. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, it's like, the thing is, again, don't eat it quick. That is the mistake. It is worse than actually smoking it because the effect takes longer. It, yeah. It will bad things will happen if you eat it too quick, but if you don't, it's maybe be nice. There you go again. Three dozen and maybe <laughs> <laughs> space muffins. Don't eat. Yeah, them no, quick. I'm looking for. Everyone says actually for like ev- what everyone says about it, it is actually really nice. Uh, it's a really yeah, it is a really nice place. Like you're actually walking around and stuff. You know, you're right next to the canals and everything, and it's really really beautiful. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm looking forward to. It. I'm I'm not looking for, forward to the fact that I think the guys I'm going with are big big drinkers um but yeah i don't know i can't keep up with that kind of stuff anymore to be honest with you but uh yeah no i'm looking forward to it well they, they do have lemons I'm, I'm sure they sell lemons in amsterdam yeah. as long as they've um, got lemons i'll be fine have we told the lemon or has michael told the lemon story on the podcast <laughs> lemon story's been told yeah many told a time death. i think well. it's great yeah. po- it is a great story yeah. And it's, it's almost as bad as like would you like some food from me so you know that's kind of the type of story we do <laughs> oh justin's back online Oh, how is he? <laughs> just to say goodbye. Brilliant. Oh, hold on, hold on. Just it, just it, hang on. Let's just see it. if we could get him on for about five minutes. That's a call. Oh, what he's in. Uh, this is, must be really good radio. <laughs> uh, he's come in and apologised and left again. And left, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So sorry, mic drop. <laughs> but, uh, uh, well, yeah, we fully understand. Well, yeah, not a problem, right. man. Yeah. No problem at all. I'll do some editing and stuff and it will sound good as new. Excellent. Yeah. All right, then, Shall guys. We, has anyone given us any any reviews on iTunes? No, recently? they haven't. I, we, think, we, yeah. I think we do need to kind of. Can we can we plead everyone who's listening? If you like us, or even if you don't like us, um, it would be very appreciated if you could give us a little review on iTunes, just because you know if people see that we've got good reviews or even bad reviews, they might take the time to listen to us. And then, yeah, if we get more listeners, then we can do more stuff with the podcast, which is what we want to do. And uh, we should probably also talk about Web in the Woods again. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so we will be recording a live show at Web in the Woods in September. Uh, a great little show, which is, well, kind of a mini festival put on for, for web enthusiasts. It's going to be going in the woods in Kent somewhere. Check it out on the website, which is webinthewoods.co.uk. We're going to be recording a live show on the Friday, and there's going to be a bunch of interesting talkers on the Saturday. So, yeah, and I will personally buy a beer for every single person who comes to watch us. Yeah. <laughs> People are going to hold you to that. No, they should. Well, there's only going to be two people there anyway. So <laughs> <should be> two. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be a lot of people. Oh, yeah, oh yeah. no, it's going to be awesome. We need to meet up and everything beforehand to prepare. Yes. Preparation is key, and this is what we're going to do. We uh, all no, know well, preparation. Yeah. <laughs> guys, <laughs> it has been awesome. It's been an awesome podcast. Good touching base with you all again. And, yeah, I suppose, audience, we'll see you next week. Yeah. Thanks for listening, guys. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Bye.
You've been listening to Three Devs and a Maybe. You can contact us at contact at three devs and a maybe dot com or follow us on Twitter at the number three devs and a maybe.